What's up, guys? It's your homeboy, Cowboy Crunk, coming to you from Kabul, Afghanistan, your war daddy, uh, coming to bring you uh, actually just something a little bit from my heart right now, some of the things that are pouring out with with all this contract talks. And I know I just did a video that's doing really well uh, a couple days ago. Um, you guys know I haven't been here. I've kind of been busy with some other things, took a little time during the off season to get my things squared away with my new job and those things and security clearance and all that. If you don't know, uh, you haven't been watching, so it's not a big deal. But there are some things changing, so I, I took a little step away. Uh, I did the video the other day, uh, and after that, I've been watching a lot of the things going on on ESPN, a lot of the heads that are talking, and, and uh, even some of the YouTube channels. And I have my perception on, on, on what's going down, why it's going down. And, and my thing is, I think I kind of have a completely different take on it. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually, I have a little different take than I had a couple days ago after watching all this stuff. I'm starting to get a little tired and fed up with the contract talks and the negotiations where, you know, look at Car what Carson Wentz got and look what the Eagles paid him and, and, and look what, uh, you know, Seattle Seahawks paid uh, Russell Wilson and, and look what Todd Gurley's making, look what the Los Angeles, you know what guys, that's their fucking decision. It has nothing to do with the Dallas Cowboys. And I understand the players wanting to get paid and you, and you kind of scope the market and you see what other guys are getting. But you guys got to realize, man, the, the players have to realize this is a team fucking sport, man. This is not golf. It's not tennis. If you want if you want to set your own salary, go, go play tennis, man. Go play golf. Do your thing. You ain't got to worry about agents and all that unless you're worried. But but this is a team sport, and 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 I got I got two players to talk about right now: Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. And and I really didn't like what Ezekiel Dak Prescott said the other day when he mentioned about you know him being the highest paid and Ezekiel should be too and Cooper should be. And I don't see why that can't happen. The reason it can't happen, guys, look. And, and I hate I hate I hate to bring up the New England Patriots, but guys. That, that's, who's, that's who's setting the market right now. They're fucking setting. Don't set the market off these play, these teams that are fucking losing. Set the market off these teams that are winning. They're, they're actually, there's only one right now. There's only one team that's consistently fucking winning. And they do it different than everybody else. You look at what the New England Patriots do. Yes, they underpaid Tom Brady, and I meant to look this up before I started. I know, you know, I know where his salary is, and I know he's about ten million under the top, and all that, all those things. And I know he took a team-friendly deal because he did that because he was trying to keep some people around him, and his wife makes money, so it ain't that important, and all those things. But it was discussed with Tom Brady on about his salary, and and he decided to take that so he could keep a few people around him. And the New England Patriots, one of those guys. Actually, and I'm, I'm going to look it up to make sure So before I say it fully, but you guys can look it up as well, before before uh, Tom Brady signed his contract, he agreed that there was a player he wanted to keep around him. And the Patriots signed Tom Brady, gave him the contract he wanted, and then still got rid of the player that Tom Brady wanted to keep. Now, I'm not going to say who that is because I, I'll do that in the next video. I do want to look it up. I meant to do it before I started. Uh, and 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 it, it uh, I did I kind of looked some other things up because I got looking on Ezekiel Elliott on this video I didn't take any notes I'm coming straight from the heart. Another thing is the same thing with this guy is he the number one running back in the league? Yes, I think he is. Does that mean he needs to be paid better than anybody else or the highest salary as far as a running back goes? No, it doesn't. It does because it's their fucking business. They're the ones. If, if I work for Coca Cola. And, and I know somebody that has the same job as me and they work at Pepsi and they're making more than me. I don't go to my boss and say, well, the guy at Pepsi's making more than me. Well, then take your ass to Pepsi. We're trying to win. We cannot pay all of these players top dollar. And you got, I'm not trying to get Ezekiel Elliott out the door. What I'm telling you is we have four years with Ezekiel Elliott right now. Four years. He has two years left on his contract and he could be franchise tag, franchise tag. That's four years. Where do you think Ezekiel Elliott is going to be in four years from now? He's going to be on his way on the decline. So we have him locked in at $3 million this year, a little over $9 million next year, close to $10, uh, a little less than, than 3 actually this year. So less than 3 this year, less than uh, 10 next year. Then the franchise tag right now is sitting at 11.2. By, by the time 
uh, two years goes by if we franchise tag him we can franchise tag him twice we're looking at paying him around probably 12 and a half maybe close to 13 on a franchise tag which is what he is probably asking for a little more than that where it's going to hurt him is this year and next year that's the way that that's the way the league has set this up guys the league has screwed the running back position that's the way it's set up so and, and, and they didn't really screw the running back position they screwed that's how the contracts are set up uh, uh, and and the thing is the problem is the running back the life of the running back is short you look at a receiver okay if a receiver let's say a receiver was in the same year as Ezekiel Elliott let's just say he's a receiver let's say he's got two years left on his contract he's supposed to get paid four million and he's supposed to get paid nine million and then we just decided to franchise tag him twice we're gonna piss him off he's probably gonna leave and he probably has another five or six years left on his on 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 his body on his frame on his tires he has t he has tread left he's a receiver they can uh, an elite receiver if you take if you take in a receiver that's at the same level as Ezekiel Elliott is as a running back he, he's the top running back in the league so let's say you take that's the the top receiver in the league and, and you put him in, in Ezekiel Elliott's position, he, if you let him fill, fulfill his contract two years and franchise him two years, and a receiver's going to have another at least four or five years left of, of elite, uh, you know, as long as he doesn't have, uh, you know, major injuries, some crazy injuries or something like that, a receiver's going to be able to play 11, 12 years. A running back doesn't have that so when you when you group these guys together and you say this is the way we're going to do the contracts the NFL sets it up that way running backs a different animal you know so really we could make him fulfill the two years franchise for tag him, franchise tag him, and by then he's probably dropping off anyways so that's why the Cowboys are looking at you know why do we do this is it fair to him no it's not fair to him it's not fair to him at all I want to say that first and foremost it's not fair to him, but if that's their options and they can do that and spend the money somewhere else, why would they not look at it? You know, why would they not say, Zeke, Zeke, these are the options. We can do it like this. We could actually do this to you and you can do nothing about it. You can sit out, you know, and then the Cowboys say, well, let's go, you know, let's go pick up one of these guys here. Let me, let me show you some guys that are out there that are not Ezekiel Elliott, but are, are probably would go for four or five million, maybe six or seven million, and you're going to get a very good running back out of that. And you you team him with Pollard, uh, and and you know you, you got a one-two combination. And I'm not talking about this uh, contract by uh, or, or wide receiver by uh, what did we have before by committee. I don't want running back by committee or anything like that. But some of these running backs that are up here, you know, in the top seven or eight tier they've, they've actually got Ezekiel Elliott as fourth uh, they got Todd Gurley as sixth uh, and, and you think about the Todd Gurley contract why would you compare yourself to Todd Gurley's contract oh Todd Gurley's getting paid this yeah Todd, Todd Gurley fell the hell off and who filled in for him last year who filled in for Tom Gur Todd Gurley last year when when he wasn't playing so well CJ Anderson who was sitting on the couch weeks before and wasn't getting paid hardly anything compared to what Todd Gurley was paying uh, and when it came down to the big plays against us, who was in there? C.J. Anderson. So if you've got a line that does help your – you've got to have a line to have a running back. You know, you've got to have a line to have a, 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 a quarterback. You, if you don't have a line, you have nothing. Uh, so, so these are some of the guys we're looking at. You know, Nick Chubb. I mean, I know, I know he's locked in on the Browns. But you talk about trade material if you had to or if you wanted to because, guys, I'm, I'm just telling you, the way the money is set up for Ezekiel Elliott long term right now, they don't have to do anything. They don't. They could sit this out. They could they could bring in somebody, you know, bring in a a, a really good, uh, uh, you know, between the tackle runner. We've got Pollard who runs outside the tackles and is a little more uh, quick and uh, quick deceptive and can do do other things. He's not going to be in on third down for pass protection or anything like that. Uh, if you see him on third down, he's probably going to be lining up uh, to go out for, uh, you know, for a reception or whatever. But, but the way Todd, or excuse me, the way Ezekiel Elliott's contract is set up from his rookie deal is two years left, $3 million, $9 million, franchise tag him 12 and 12, maybe thir close to 13. Right now it's 11-2, so, you know, a couple years it may bump up a little bit. There's no reason to do the contract because by if you if you fulfill that four years that we have him, he's probably 
you know, ready to go anyways. And, and that's horrible. That's horrible to say, but that's just the way it is. That's reality, guys. So that's a reason, you know, that, that there's not a big, big push for me to sign him. And we have four years to draft. We have four years to draft. You, you never know what you draft. You throw guys. I mean, we got Dak Prescott in the fourth round. What is he doing? He's balling like a first rounder. You never know on some of these guys. There's talent all throughout the draft. So there's no reason to buckle our knees, bend down, and, and do this Ezekiel Elliott thing. Now let's switch to Dak. My thing on Dak Prescott, he is probably one of the best football players in the league. Ezekiel Elliott is as well, but it's a different position. Uh, he's not one of the best quarterbacks, I would say. Now, please listen to what I'm saying. He has some attributes as a quarterback he needs to work on. You guys know if you're part of my channel, you heard it a couple times. He needs to work on accuracy. He needs to work on pocket presence. Two things you can coach. Uh, he fumbles a lot. That's because of the pocket presence. That's also because we have had a little bit of issues with our line last year. Dak Prescott actually led the league in fumbles. So, you, you know, he led the league in fumble recoveries as well, but that's because when you fumble the ball, it's usually at your feet or fairly close to you. So uh, he does hustle and get back to the ball. He had 14 fumbles and seven fumble recoveries. Um, but in saying that, those two things can be coached. The other talents Dak Prescott has cannot be coached. I will say that. I'll say it over again, and that's what you're paying him for. You are paying him because he's a winner, he's a leader, and, and all those things. But still, I don't look at Dak Prescott, or I don't look at uh, Carson Wentz's contract, Phillip Rivers' contract, these other guys contract and say well you know he needs to be paid because he's that it's your job to set the market it's your it's your job to decide what you're worth and how many of the players around you you want to keep because that does affect it especially affects the second tier players your guys in the Chidobe Awuzie guys the, the guys that are that are coming up later it affects your guys that uh are on the team now, like uh, Joe Thomas and those guys that are going to be looking for contracts soon uh, that are your second-tier players. What happens on those second-tier players? When when your top-tier players take too much money, your second-tier players, what you do is you push them out. J.J. Wilcox had happened to, Skandrick, all those guys that we had in the secondary, those guys got pushed out to make money to sign the guys that were coming up. And you replace them with, look, with rookies. That's what you do with your middle-tier guys. Because you can't replace your top tier guys with rookies. You have to pay them. But your top tier guys bump your second tier guys out and your, your rookies come up and you try to do the best you can and draft the best you can and replace your second tier and third tier guys. Your guys coming off special teams that have been with you for a year or two. So this is my perception on, on what's going on. But, but we cannot look at these other teams and, and say, you know, if, if they decide to pay Russell Wilson that, that's their mistake. That's their mistake. Don't go off of that shit and say that's what we have to pay Dak. If they t decided to pay Todd Gurley what they paid Todd Gurley, don't you? We can't. You can't pay all your players at the top of the league. We've got our top three players on offense looking for contracts right now, and Ezekiel Elliott really is not. It's not mandatory. The only reason it's mandatory that we do anything with Ezekiel Elliott is because if he sits out, if he sits out, he does push our hand. So to me, if he pushes our hand, you know what I do? I bring in the best running back I can find that, that's, that's different than Pollard, that'll kind of offset, but do, can do some of the things Dak does, and I roll with it into the season and see what happens. And if that guy balls out, somebody like uh, uh, Henry, Henry from the Titans, and, and he's, he's due. Derrick Henry's a due a contract right now. You know, what if we stepped out and said, hey, we'll give you Ezekiel Elliott, we'll take Derrick Henry, and we'll, we'll uh, you know, we get a draft pick for that. We lower our salary. We got a guy that can play. He's been up and down a little bit, but I think at the end of the season, they, he found what he was good at. The Titans found what he was good at, and he really started playing well towards the end of the season. That's a guy we could probably get for 4 or $5 million a year and, 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 get a, and get a trade uh, and, or excuse me, get a draft pick. Uh, and keep that salary down where we have it for Cooper, we have it for Byron Jones, we have it for Jalen Smith next year because the contract ain't just this year. And I know we get $10 million next year, but how many players are we saying that about? Oh, 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 well, we can sign him because we get another $10 million next year. Well, we can sign this guy because we get another $10 million next year. We can sign this guy because we get – that $10 million only goes so far. You know, the next year when you have four more players that need contracts, that's only, what, four – you're only talking about $2.2 million for, per other – Players and when these contracts are going from 500,000, they want six million. 
well that right there's that right there's uh you know five million of your 10 million so maybe you got two players you can sign but the other two are going to have to go and you're going to have to bring your rookies up and fill those spots and you better hope your rookies that you that you picked can do it so that's where i'm saying guys the new england concept is what they're doing they don't no one threatens that team the only one that can threaten that team was tom brady he locked into that contract when he locked in he had requirements that he wanted met and New England didn't meet those requirements. They gave him his money, but they didn't keep the players that he wanted around him. They still moved players that asked for money. So I'm just letting you know, guys, that's how I feel. I'm a little frustrated. I'm tired of these people hearing about money and comparing this money to that money. And, and this guy got that much money, and I deserve this much money because he got it. That That's a decision the Eagles made. That's a decision the Broncos made. That's a decision uh, the Steelers made or whatever they made. And, and, and that's their decision. And they're going to put themselves in a hole by doing that if those players don't perform at the top of the damn game. At the top. So that's all I got to say, guys. Uh, I'm going to shut this rant down. I, I was a little crazy. I was a little off the wall on this. But I've been talking about salaries with my damn company as well and, and other things and, and issues here. So I got a little fired up. But I had some stuff to show you guys on here. And I will show you this. Le'Veon Bell. This is just articles I pulled up. I, I Connor, James Connor. All I all I put was Connor versus uh, Le'Veon Bell stats to kind of compare them, and articles came up. Just tremendous articles about how Connor came in, his stats were better than Le'Veon Bell. How Connor came in, he actually performed better than Le'Veon. This is article after article. None of them taking Le'Veon Bell's side for for holding out. Uh, so it worked for Le'Veon Bell. If you're, if you're in an individual sport and you're playing for Le'Veon Bell, you're playing for Le'Veon Bell. And that's what another thing I get tired of hearing these players say. You know, well, he needs to get his. Well, you know what? He needs to be respectful because every bit that he gets is, is something less than one of his teammates, one of his family gets. And they talk about it being, oh, it's a family here, you know, and I, I appreciate being here. You appreciate being here until it's time for your contract and you want to ask for more money than the guy that plays on the other team that has nothing to do with you. You're on this family. You know what I'm saying? If the Joneses make this much, I didn't mean to say the Joneses, if the Carsons make this much, don't ask, don't go over there and say, well, well, well Johnny gets, you know, 25 cents, uh, uh, what is that call you got when you were a kid? Uh, uh, allowance. Uh, well, Johnny gets 25 cents allowance a week, and I only get 10. That's bullshit. Why does 20? Because Johnny's dad is making more money than I am, so you're getting 10 goddamn cents. Go over there and live in his house. That, that's the way I look at it, guys. So Cowboy Crunk is out. I'm a little pissed off. I had a little rant, but but that's the way I'm feeling about this contract. I don't. We don't need to pay attention to what other teams are doing. Be a cowboy. Stand up as a cowboy. Jerry Jones, do your shit. If they don't want to take the money that you're offering them, it's respectful money. It's a shitload of money, and they need to take it, and they need to take their ass back on the field. Peace.